Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're checking out the Hotel Home 3000 portable power station. In this video I'll be showing you everything about it, including some features you don't typically see in other units this size. Big thanks to Hotel for sending this over so I could test it out and share my honest thoughts with you. Starting with the specs, this power station packs a massive 3072 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery and has a lifespan of up to 6500 cycles. So you can expect it to last for years with minimal degradation. It is equipped with a 3000 watt inverter that can easily run most home essentials for several hours. The inverter also features a pure sine wave design, which means it delivers clean stable energy, safe for sensitive electronics like computers and TVs. It also has a surge power of up to 6000 watts, allowing it to handle short bursts when devices like fridges or power tools first start up. Now let me show you everything that comes with the unit. The first thing is the quick start guide, then the full user manual and the warranty information. And by the way, Hotel backs this power station with a solid 5 year warranty, which is a really good sign that they stand behind their product. As for accessories, the first cable you'll see is the standard AC charging cable. Then you've got an XT60 to cigarette port adapter. It also comes with an Anderson cable. And this part really surprised me because it's designed to let you connect wind power to the unit. I'll explain more about that a little later. And for solar, they include an XT90 to MC4 connector. It's a heavy duty 10 gauge design, built that way because this unit can handle up to 1500 watts of solar input, which is really impressive for a portable power station. They even throw in a little tool for unlocking MC4 connectors, which is a small detail, but really handy. So yeah, they definitely included everything you'll need to get started. Now, when it comes to the design, the Home 3000 feels pretty solid. Up front, there's a clear display that shows all the key info like battery percentage, input and output in real time. Moving over to the left side, this is where you'll find the DC section. To access it, you just lift off the magnetic cover. It's not attached with hinges or anything. You simply pop it off and snap it back on when you're not using the ports to keep the connectors protected. The first thing you'll notice here is the blue button, which is the main power button for the unit. To turn it on, just press and hold it for about 3 seconds and the screen will light up. Here in this part, you'll find all the DC outputs and there's a small button you press to activate this section. Starting from the left, you get two high powered USB-C ports that support up to 140 watts of fast charging which is more than enough to charge laptops or other power hungry devices directly. Right below those, there are four USB-A ports at 18 watts each, perfect for smaller devices like phones, tablets or cameras. On the right side, there's a 12 volt cigarette lighter port, in case you want to run something that uses that connection, like a portable cooler. And just below that, you'll find two 12 volt DC output ports. Here, you will also find an XT60 connection, and the reason it comes covered is because it's an output port. It delivers 12 volts at up to 360 watts and is mainly used with the XT60 to car socket cable I showed you earlier. This lets you power devices that need a 12 volt car style input, like a portable fridge, air pump or other DC appliances. Now, when you move around to the back of the unit, there's really nothing major to point out, just the Autel logo. But when you move to the right side, this is where things get interesting because this is where most of the ports are located. You'll notice it has two magnetic covers. The one on top gives you access to all the AC output connections and the one on the bottom is for all the input connections. So starting with the AC outputs, this section has its own power button that you press to turn it on. Here you'll find four grounded AC outlets. The three on the top share a total of 15 amps between them, which is about 1800 watts combined. Then there's another separate outlet also rated for 15 amps, but it's on its own circuit so it doesn't share power with the others. You can run a heavier device on it without affecting the rest. And finally there's a 30 amp outlet for high demand equipment or RV use. Now looking at the bottom section, this is where all the input ports are located. The first thing you'll notice is the circuit breaker protection, which is there in case something goes wrong. Right next to it is the AC input where you connect the cable to charge the power station from a wall outlet. Beside that, there's a small switch that lets you choose between slow or fast charging. And that's something I really like that they added, 
I'll explain more about it in a bit. Below that there's the XT90 connector, which supports up to 1500 watts of solar input. They even include an Anderson port in case you want to connect a wind power setup. And finally, at the very bottom, there are two expansion ports that allow you to connect extra batteries if you ever want to increase your total capacity. And if you thought that was already a lot, they even included two wireless charging spots right on top of the unit. They only work when the DC section is activated, and they're really responsive. As soon as you place your phone on top, it starts charging right away. Something I wanted to mention about this power station is that it also comes with small wheels on the bottom which makes it a lot easier to move around on flat surfaces. And that definitely helps, because this thing is pretty heavy at around 83 pounds. The wheels also have locks to keep the unit securely in place once it's set up. Personally, I would have liked to see a slightly bigger wheel design, but for moving it on hard surfaces, it works just fine. Now, this power station also works with an app that you can download either from the App Store or by scanning the QR code in the Quick Start Guide. The app is called Hotel Charge. And once you install it, you'll need to either create an account or log in if you already have one. From there, you have two ways to connect to the power station. The easiest way is through Bluetooth. It'll show up automatically on your phone and the pairing process only takes a few seconds. The only downside is that you'll have to repeat the connection every time you want to use it and you won't be able to control it remotely when you're away. That's why I recommend using the Wi-Fi option instead. To set it up, just find the small button on the front panel, press and hold it for about 3 seconds, and then in the app you'll enter your Wi-Fi information to start the pairing process. Once that's done, you'll have access to all the same features that are available directly on the power station, and a few extra ones. From here, you can see the battery percentage, input and output power, and the estimated time remaining, whether you're charging or discharging. You can also turn the ports on and off right from your phone. One cool feature is that the power station has built-in lighting, a light strip around the screen and another one at the bottom. And through the app, you can actually change the color of the lights. Another handy option is the battery protection setting, where you can set a maximum and minimum charge level. And one of the most important features, and the one I personally use the most, is that through the app you can change the charging speed. You'll find three different modes. The first one is the healthy mode, which charges the power station at around 900 watts. This mode is great for everyday use because it's gentler on the battery and helps extend its lifespan. Then there's quick charge mode, which pushes the unit to its maximum AC input, up to 1800 watts, and that's pretty insane. It'll charge the battery extremely fast, but I wouldn't recommend using it all the time since it puts a bit more stress on the system. One thing to note is that this only affects AC charging. If you're also charging through solar or wind input, those will still work at full power, so you can actually combine both and basically double your charging speed. The third option is custom mode, and this one's really handy because you can manually set your charging speed depending on how much AC input you have available. For example, if you're running off a smaller circuit or a generator, you can lower the input to stay within that limit. Now, in order to use these three modes, the physical switch on the power station has to be set to fast charge. If it's set to slow mode, the app will lock those settings and won't let you change them. And in slow mode, it limits charging to around 500 watts. So one of the first things I want to test with this power station is how accurate that 3000 watt output really is and whether it can actually hold up to it. For this test, I'm going to use the AC ports along with the 30 amp outlet to get the full output. I'll be using a converter from the 30 amp plug to a regular outlet so I can connect all three circuits at the same time. I'll also connect a small meter to one of the outlets to measure the voltage, just to see if there's any drop when pulling close to 3000 watts. I'll start the test by plugging in a space heater on its maximum setting, since that's one of the devices that draws the most power. It started pulling close to 1300 watts, and according to the meter, the voltage was holding steady at around 119 volts which is exactly what you want to see. Then, to push it even further, I connected two heat guns. With both of them set to maximum, they were pulling close to 3,500 watts. So, at that point, I was pulling about 500 watts over the rated 3,000 watt limit, and according to my meter, the voltage was still holding steady at around 118 volts, 
That's a really good sign because it shows the inverter can maintain clean, stable power even under a heavy load without any major voltage drop. And as expected, the unit eventually went into overload protection since I was pushing it past its limit, but it held for about 2 minutes before shutting down. When that happens, the screen displays an overload warning and all you have to do is press the power button again to reset it. So at this point, the battery was at around 42%. I set the heater and both heat guns to draw roughly 3000 watts, which is the unit's rated continuous power, and let it run until the battery hits zero. In total, it ran for about 25 minutes straight. During that time, I was monitoring the output to see if there were any drops or inconsistencies, and it stayed rock solid at around 118 volts the whole way, exactly what you want to see. The unit didn't shut off or glitch, it just kept running smoothly until it fully drained. In this case, I let it go all the way down to zero because I wanted to see how it behaved, but normally I'd recommend setting a bottom limit in the app, something like 5%, just to keep a bit of reserve power and protect the battery for long-term use. Another thing I'm really impressed with on this power station is the USB-C ports. It has two of them rated at 140 watts each, and that's something you don't usually find on most power stations. I tested them, and they actually deliver the full 140 watts which is really nice because it means you can charge high power devices like laptops, MacBooks, or even some power hungry tablets directly without needing a bulky adapter. Now, if you want to use solar as your power input, that's totally fine. You can connect a solar array of up to 1,500 watts. The only thing you need to make sure of is that your solar input stays between 12 and 75 volts. And there's also the Anderson port, which adds an extra 200 watts and is mainly designed for wind power. That's really handy if you want to expand your setup and add a small wind turbine to help charge it. But if you prefer solar, you can also use that same Anderson port as an additional solar input, just like I'm doing right here with this 200 watt Renogi solar panel. Another thing you might be wondering about is how effective and noisy the cooling system is. What I noticed is that it pushes a good amount of airflow, which is exactly what you want for efficient cooling. Even when I was using fast charging, the fans stayed surprisingly quiet, so Autel definitely did a great job managing heat without making it noisy. So I really see this power station being super useful in a lot of different scenarios. At home, it's great as a backup during power outages to keep your fridge, Wi-Fi and lights running for hours. It's also perfect for camping, RV trips or overlanding since it gives you clean, quiet power without the noise of a gas generator. And for DIY or job site use, the 30 amp outlet and 3000 watt inverter can easily handle power tools and other heavy equipment. It's also a great option for anyone looking to build a small off-grid setup. Overall, there are a lot of ways you can use this power station. I will leave a link down below in the description if you want to check it out. And if you decide to buy through that link, I'll earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. And that really helps support the channel. If you have any questions about this unit, drop them in the comments and I'll be happy to help.